Our first guest tonight is an Emmy and Grammy winning comedian whose hobbies include not watching sports and texting nude things to Anderson Cooper. You can see her live at the Mirage in Las Vegas, May 23rd. Please welcome Kathy Griffin. <laughs> for the most appearances as a guest on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. And I also <laughs> am in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most televised stand-up comedy specials. Oh. Oh, that's what this is. OK. But I just want to say, wow. I think it's more significant that I have actually well, been a guest on this show more than any celebrity, any big star. I don't want to ruin it for you, but. Because you love me. Well, for sure. And what no... we have is real, and I just love this man for you, having me on. Do you know how many times you've been on? 34 times. It's actually 32. 32, 32 oh, times. Well, yeah. Okay, 32. 32 is times. Great, because we're like family. Which makes you second to Adam Carolla, who has been on 44 times. <laughs> but that's really well, good, though. Second I was is... told that I had the world record for the most Jimmy Kimmel appearances. Who told you that? Uh, I don't know your team. Uh, my team is wrong. Adam Carolla beat me. Yeah, well, yeah, he is. But it's not over yet. I mean, there's still. I mean, if you want, you could go. I'm in the Guinness Book. You don't even have a book. <laughs> At least in Guinness, they have a book, and a British guy comes and gives you a plaque. We don't have a British guy. We have a Mexican guy. Oh, I love a Mexican guy. Hi. Thank you, dear. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Well, I didn't mean to. It's very it. hurtful. And the only thing that can keep me warm at night is the freezing cold love. From um, my... Are you looking for the thing behind your... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, it's Kathy's ass, everyone. <laughs> from my Grammy for Best Comedy oh, Album. Right. Well, Adam doesn't have one of those. That's for sure. All right, now you can't touch it. Don't touch it. What? Because what? Because there's some Grammy rule where unless you won one, you can't even touch it. No, with her. Don't get not. me fired from the. Yes, first of all, I don't believe a thing you tell me because you is... said I won the world record for your show Wait a and minute. then I lost Adam Carolla. Is that a joke about the. No. You can, unless you've won a Grammy, you can't even touch what, it. How about when they present I'll the Grammy? You. I'll kill you. If somebody who presents it. It's got to be a Grammy winner. Those dopey women who hold the. the dopey, the, what you. Nothing has changed about you. Those, nothing <laughs> has changed. The spokesmodels who are holding the, the trophies who hand it to the celebrity, did You're they win? You're not a spokesmodel. You've lost some weight. Oh! Oh, my God! Oh. I touched it. I, and I defy the well, Grammys great. to sue me for well, it. Oh, why don't you give it to Adam Carolla? <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, I. You always wanted a you like kind of you I feel, visualized it. I feel awards are more important than people. <laughs> Anyone can have a family. I'd like awards. <laughs> and so when I won after being nominated six years in a row, I was oh. not gracious or graceful. <laughs> I was a fool and I lost it in front of some celebrities that I don't really know, but something came over my body where I thought I thought I knew Madonna. Oh, and where was this? Where did this, this occur? This is at the Grammys. Okay, so I have just won, yeah. and I'm drunk with excitement, and then I see Madonna coming down the red carpet, and she rolls deep. I mean, she's got the bodyguards. She had, like, a, a cane that was bedazzled. She had a suit on and a top hat. It was super fly. She has one of her kids with her, and I can hear the gay gasps. You know, as she's coming to hear the <laughs> like that, and then I clutch my imaginary pearls, and you know, being a gay man, it's my job. I love her. Oh yeah. I clock in. I do my job as a gay man. I worship Madonna. You get it. And so I thought, oh my gosh, I'm a Grammy winner. It's about time I met fellow Grammy winner Madonna. And then I re realized I don't um, know her. So as she walked past me, one of the bodyguards, I swear to God, he looked at me like, don't even think about it. Don't even <laughs> back away. And I, I had it planned in my head. You know, you plan these speeches. And I thought, I'm just going to say, like, hello, Madonna. You look beautiful tonight. Um, I just won a Grammy. And I look forward to your performance. 
was what I, you know, planned to say. What did you actually say? I'm just going to be honest, okay, because I don't feel like this is a place where I should lie or sugarcoat things. Agreed. Okay, so Madonna walks past. First of all, she smiled, and she was wearing a grill like Flava Flav. Oh, yeah. So that was delicious, and that's in my act already. <laughs> but I still wanted to be gracious, and what happened was Madonna walked past, and my inner gay boy took over, and I <laughs> stood there like a fool in a Roberto Cavalli gown, being a Grammy winner, just going like this. <gasps> fierce! Fierce! Diva! Diva! Diva fierceness! No, fierce! You did not, you did not I say fierce. Oh, God, yes. You did not, and you yes, clapped? I, Yes, I clapped. <laughs> and I how, said, I don't know her. And, and so, I clapped and yelled, fierce diva, fierceness, fierce. And what did, <laughs> Hashtag fierce. <laughs> what did she say? She ignored me. What did she look at me like? I was a crazy person, of course. And then I, it got worse because I felt compelled to tell, like, powerful women that I had won this Grammy as a woman, best comedy album, first time since 1986, a woman has won. Wow. And so I started just bum-rushing people like poor Pink. <laughs> so I see Pink, and she looked beautiful, and I, like, knocked her off her shoes, and I, I went, Pink, I won! And she was like, take this creature off me. And then she went, oh, hi, Kathy. And, <laughs> and I ran up to Katy Perry, who was in, like, a Dior gown with like sparklies and I got tangled in her skirt and I was like I won I won and I, I almost knocked over a lot of very powerful celebrities oh, that's, that... and I got tangled in Jared Leto's hair a lot happened <laughs> it's a big night it must have been a big night yeah. I mean that's I mean that's a very very big deal for you I know but look I still have goals do you have, have what are yes. your goals what are you what, what's well, left look, as you know everything's shaking up in late night so I think I should go on after Nightline you know, oh. people get bored with the news. There's only so oh, much I would, news. Oh, I would love that. And then, it's not even ABC. It's like ABC adjacent. <laughs> and I'd love to do like a modern day Tom Snyder. Remember Tom Snyder would just yeah. do a show while like smoking a cigarette and yep. he'd rant to be bitter. I mean, that is No, but I could start. Mm -hmm. And, um, <laughs> but I will tell you, I met someone and I realized this guy kind of, he kind of figured it all out. Who's that? Uh, his name is Maury Povich. <laughs> <laughs> How, in, in what way has Maury Povich figured it out? Uh, in a way, you haven't. So <laughs> I, I don't know what Wait. your little salary is, what your little pocket change that you consider to be a living. But let me tell you, Maury Povich is richer than God. Yeah. He's richer than your new bestie, Oprah. <laughs> no, he's not. He's not richer even, than Oprah. I can't even. How rich? And how do you know that Maury Povich is rich? What he's do you know about him? Loaded. I know everything about him. Okay. How? Because I got to know him. I, um, I think people should have dreams. That's what this country's about. A big, I'm, a, I'm like a living dream catcher. And not just my vagina, the whole body. The whole body. No, hold on. What? I want to take a break here. Because I've teased you because you can't believe I'm rolling deep with Mopo. I want to find out what happened. That's right. I cannot imagine you with... I can't imagine him being on your list of people, by the He's way. He's so on my list. How can he be on your How list? Are, because you have the wrong list. I've been trying to tell you for 15 years. All right, we're going to go list. through the list, and I want to hear the... You and Tom Cruise, Zuma <laughs> Thurman, it was on your list. <laughs> I got the list. Right. Kathy Griffin is here. We'll be right back. <laughs> As we, when we, you were just telling me that you admire me for what we're about to discuss. I do. That is true. I do admire. you know I do it for the love of the game. There were no cameras there. I just did it. You went to see Maury Povich tape the show. Correct. But let's go deeper. Okay. I want a relationship with Mopo because he's living the dream. He uh, does, you know, he tapes his shows and... I watch Maury in bed with my boyfriend, and, you know, we've discussed the age difference, so let's just talk about it. I'm 53, he's 35. Yeah. Thank you. See? Unlike you, I am a horror role model. Yeah. All right, so anyway, he got me back into Maury, and we all have been watching Maury, but as I got back into it, there's something about the end of the show when they say, if you find yourself in the Stamford, Connecticut area, and want tickets, and I thought, I'm never in the Stamford, Connecticut area. I've got to make this happen. <laughs> so I emailed him because of my fame, and you know, they all want to meet me. They all want to meet me. Sure. They all want to sit down. And in fact, uh, we met in person at the Capitol Grill, 
And oh, you had a meal with Maury? I had a sit down like with Don Corleone. And, wow. Yes, and we discussed, you know, his, his business and, you know, his life with Connie and the jet. And it's one of those conversations where you realize you're just doing it all wrong. Hold but on, the loving... jet? He has a jet? You don't? No, he has a jet from okay, to when asking are you gonna who's get pregnant it? and who fathered. I feel like I'm Yanla and you're Oprah and you're not getting it. <laughs> like, I'm Yanla trying to fix your life. So All right. Yeah, he's, he's got, got a, a jet. paternity jet, literally. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Does it have a name? Air Maury. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yes. <laughs> and so he does the shows, and the audience loves him. And I wanted to infiltrate the audience. And I knew, once again, the awards, the global fame, the bikini modeling. I can't just walk in there. It's problematic. You know, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. It's really, sometimes it's more of a curse. <laughs> and so I realized that I had to infiltrate the Maury audience um, in costume, in a disguise, if you will. So I will say at dinner, Maury was a little freaked out when during a nice normal conversation, I had a plastic bag with the Tap of the Coffee wig from the Tap of the Coffee collection. And um, I had some makeup and a, you know, you are not the father t-shirt. So I think, you I think Maury- You brought this for lunch? Look, I, I, I get it. I come on a little stronger, <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. I mean? But I always have a plan. And so I was determined to not only attend the Maury show, but to be in the front row. And I felt I was kind of like the section leader. Because, you know, when it comes time to give somebody the, the thumbs down, if, like, the guest comes out and you feel like their swag isn't clean, you know, they come out, right? You know what I'm talking about. Or if you feel like somebody isn't going to pass the lie detector, you know, you got to lead your section like, oh, yeah, kiss her feet, kiss her feet. There you go. They're my people. They get it. They get it. So anyway, Maury was a little frightened. I'm not going to lie. But he played along, and it's one of my proudest moments. And you were actually sitting in the audience in disguise yeah. at the Maury Povich show. Yeah. I watched one taping from the back, and I said, screw this. I got to be in the game, baby. Put me in. Take, coach, take me off the bench. So I went in between tapings, put on the disguise, sat in the front row. I, I admit I looked freaky. Like, yeah. I'm not going to say I, I looked gorgeous and harmless. I looked like a psycho. You brought, the, you brought a, a piece of videotape uh, of course, it's, from it's this. It's my proudest work. It's the work I'm the most proud of. All right. Now, tell, us, well, tell us which one is you. And, uh, and the, on her website, all her dates are there. Yes, Kathy Maury Griffin. Like an com. Animal, come see me. <laughs> and of course, and that, when does that Maury show air? I don't know when it's going to air, but I hope the numbers are through the roof. Oh, I'm sure they will be. <laughs> Kathy That's Griffin, right. everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs>